I was strolling on the moon one day in a very, very month of December. Now, May. When the last men on the moon <laughs> headed home, oh, is this a deep way to travel? they took pictures of the lunar surface as they went. And what they imaged was extraordinary. It can only be described as a blue lake on the moon. At the time, no one really knew what it was, but it's been proven that this is young, recent volcanic activity on the moon. This titanium-rich lava lake is a real challenge to photograph. In fact, NASA's found more lava lakes, which is called IMPs, and says they're too small to even be seen from Earth. IMPs are too small to be seen from Earth, averaging less than a third of a mile, about 500 meters across in their largest dimension. NASA seems to think you have to spend billions of dollars on a probe to image an IMP. But we're going to try and do it for a bit less. And I know that sounds bonkers, and I know NASA says we can't see it, but we're going to give it a go. And the reason I think it's possible Hi, uh, is because of this 50-year-old scope. Thank you so much. Okay, no problem. It was free. Thanks, Rob. Admittedly, the mirror did need a little bit of a clean-up. But combining this old scope with modern tech produces surprisingly remarkable results. What the NASA guys don't realise is that us amateurs, we can make use of fantastic technology now. We've got CMOS sensor cameras, they're amazing. We've got really incredible free software and we can extract incredible amount of detail. Zoom in and have a look, shall we? When you stack a hundred images shot through this old six inch scope together, you can see things that are a thousand meters wide, tantalizingly close to the resolution we need to resolve the Blue Lake. Good though she's been, we're gonna need something a bit bigger. And as luck would have it, a posher, fatter, and slightly younger version of that 50-year-old scope came up for sale on Astro Buy and Sell. Blimey, look at that. This is a 10-inch F6 Newtonian built by Astro Systems of Luton. And back in 1981, if you'll pardon the expression, she was the dog's bollocks. <laughs> Linton, hello. Hi, boy. Good to see you. I mean, I knew she was going to be big, and I was expecting her to be big, but when you actually see it, how are you feeling, Linton? Gutted. I'm losing one of my best telescopes. Thing is, although she's big, her mirror isn't that fat, only 10 inches. But have a look at this, because her secondary mirror's obstruction is very small, and that means the light will ripple only very minimally as it passes by it on the way to the main mirror. So if the main mirror is really good, this scope has the potential to eke out loads of detail. More even than a fatter SCT, because SCT's larger obstruction causes a bigger ripple. Mind just telling me a little bit about the history of this? Right, well this was made by Luton Astro Systems, which is basically uh, two guys, Rob Miller, and Peter Drew, and they used optics by uh, the very famous David Hines. David Hines mirror. Yes. I mean, it seems to me, having gone through it, it seems like sort of like the Rolls Royce of telescopes to right, me. Yeah, it was. For the production in this country, this was, I think, the best. The price of this new is, I think, £825. Yeah, so, so you've sold it to me for 650 Yeah. <laughs> so, so I was like, hmm, that, that maybe isn't such a great bargain. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I looked at how much it would be worth in today's money. Do you know what I mean? If you yeah, do it with inflation. Yeah. Yeah. And do you know how much it was? Well, I was guessing about 4000 It is. It's £4,000 yeah. pounds for this. <laughs> So you got a bargain. Got a massive bargain, yeah. <laughs> and as I say, don't sell it to somebody else yeah. without coming back to me first. Well, it's on camera now, so I can't. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'll sell it back to you for £4,000. <laughs> now, there is a small chance that this pinnacle of 1980s British astro engineering and its £650 price tag may not be appreciated by Mrs Biscuit 
and the little biscuits. They're just not ready for this. We made the executive decision to try and hide her from Mrs. Biscuit. It's disguised as a, a large pebbled beach. I think they'll be so disinterested in any of my telescopy stuff. They just think it's a sort of, I don't know. I don't know what they'll think. I don't think they won't even think about it. I think I can get away with this. Are you seriously trying to hide it? Yeah. Bloody hell! Babes, that's enormous. <laughs> to be honest, that could have gone much, much worse. All right, let's see what this old girl, who I'm naming Big Bertha, let's see what she can do. Keeps you on your toes, huh? FYI, it's bonfire night. Despite Bertha's focus knob being a bit stiff, it's actually looking pretty good. Really, really good, actually. Maybe good enough to bag the Blue Lake. But then we hit a big problem. And it wasn't the smoke. Hold still. Every time I try and home in on where I think the blue lake on the moon is, I lean a little bit. And that causes the roof to wobble a little bit. And that causes Big Bertha to fly off target. Lost it. And when you're hunting something this tiny, it's a deal breaker. I think I'm gonna call it a night. The good news though, is that I survived in one piece and next morning came up with a cunning plan. We're gonna try and perch Big Bertha on this mount, which I can control remotely, so I won't have to step on the roof. All right, so I must admit, I am a teeny bit worried as to whether Big Bertha is gonna fit on this Little old red mount. <sighs> Let's find out. <sighs> okay, moment of truth. Maybe she's balanced. Plan B. All right, let's see if this works. Ooh, look. Brilliant. Even with this computer controllable mount, finding the blue lake on the moon is gonna be very hard and I am gonna need some help. Hey, Bernie, thank you for doing this. No, I didn't want to do this, Rory. Yeah, but we wouldn't want Mrs. Biscuit to find out what happened to those carrots, huh? <sighs> okay, where is this blue lake? Good question. This is the best clue that I've got, is that the guys on Apollo 17, they took this shot, and in the shot, you can see the blue lava lake in the moon. The shot was taken as the Apollo 17 astronauts headed home. They'd just gone over the Sea of Serenity, and they were somewhere here, between the Manilius Crater and the Apennine Mountains, somewhere around here. So you want me to guide Big Bertha exactly to the Blue Lake, using just this picture as a reference? Mm-hmm. That's not going to be very easy. It's not going to be easy, and actually, it's worse than you think. Really? Because, see outside, you see it's not, not windy, is it? But actually, if you go 10 kilometres up, we're in trouble. 10 kilometres up? the wind is blowing a gale. However, as one weather front moves away and a new one comes in, there's a brief period of calm. If we don't do it when the atmosphere is completely calm, there is no way we're gonna be able to spot this blue lake on the moon. Okay. We've got two hours till the window of calm appears above us and we're gonna use the time to unstiffen Bertha's focuser. Oh, lovely little ball bearings, that's so cute. <sighs> I just blooming dropped all the ball bearings. Happily, the old grease has stuck the ball bearings to the shaft like glue. We're gonna get rid of the gluey grease with disc brake cleaner. 
and re-lubricate everything with white lithium grease. And incredibly, we got it done and back on Big Bertha, fully working just before the window of calm opens up 10 kilometers above us. This is it, everybody. Glory awaits. Oh my gosh, you're not gonna believe what I've just done. Look, that, that blows air. This is Mrs. Biscuits actually for her camera. It blows air, it's great for cleaning dust spots. This, however, this blows lithium grease. And um, I wanted to clean the dust spots off my camera. Look at my camera. Yeah, I'm a massive dumbass, aren't I? I've just sprayed lithium grease over my camera. This delay could cost us dear because 10 kilometers above us, the window of calm is closing. Okay, Lenny, here we go. Just hurry up. Right, can you see where we are? Uh, no. Can you? Oh, man. After losing precious time... Try going that way. ...searching for the Sea of Serenity... Okay, let's go back along here. ...we attract a police helicopter, and I have to say, without much help from my navigator... Let's go. We locate Apollo 17's launch spot and track the route Apollo 17 took across the Sea of Serenity and past the Manilium Crater. That's the Manilium Crater there. They pass between, hold on, this way. They pass between Manilium and Kronos, that crater up there. And that's where this picture was taken. Right, can you see where we are? Um, um no. Hmm. Wait a minute. The camera is on its side, Rory. Incredibly, Big Bertha is capturing a shot just as zoomed in as the one taken by the crew on Apollo 17. The blue lake in the moon should be there. I can't see it though. But that's where it is, isn't it? Fingers crossed. All right, let's get imaging. So I shoot in infrared. The infrared filter is a really good one to use, by the way, because its wavelengths are affected least by the atmospheric wobble. And there definitely is wobble out there right now. And then I shoot with the green filter, and then finally I shoot with the blue filter. Then I stack the best sharpest channel, which I believe is the infrared, to quickly see if stacking reveals enough detail to see the blue lake on the moon. Okay, this is it. This is it, my friend. This is where we find out. I've done a very rough stack. Have we got anything in infrared? Let's zoom in. Uh, I can't see it. Can you? I can't see it either. Arse. Maybe NASA has got this right. Five nights later, and the sun has spread across the full face of the moon. Traditionally considered the flattest, most boring night for lunar photography. And this is the IR channel. And yes, it does look flat, doesn't it? But the atmosphere looks calmer. Okay, I've just done a quick process on the IR data from last night. Now I zoomed in at the place where the blue lake in the moon should be. It has another name, by the way, Inner. And you know what? I began to get excited. Because that titchy little patch of slightly lighter pixels is in fact exactly where Inner should be. Now the proof is gonna be in the pudding. Is it gonna be bluer than what's around it? I hope the blue channels picked it up too. We're going to find out. So I process the infrared, the green and the blue channels, have a quick shower and combine in a program called Affinity. I have processed in colour what I hope is the blue lake in the moon. Is it blue? Was it just a fuzzy patch? Have we got it? Let's find out, shall we? Okay. Uh, uh, I have a
have no idea where it is. Let me point it out. It's just there. That bluish smudge <laughs> is the blue lava lake on the moon. It is actually blue. We have actually got it. It may not be the best shot in the world, but I think this is probably the most difficult target on the moon. So I am pleased. Well, if NASA said you couldn't get it, and uh, we have, then jobs are good. Thing is, I'm convinced it's possible to shoot a much better shot. I think shooting it in lunar evening, you might get a much nicer shot with more shadows around the mountains and stuff. My problem though, is the weather. It's been terrible. Maybe you'll have more luck. I'm really hoping actually some of you guys will take your scopes, will have a go at this target, and I would love to see the results. I'm hoping to create a group on Facebook so you can upload your shots. All right. I really look forward to seeing what you manage to do. And just to say big thank you to everyone who bought a telescope in December through my website and links. Because you guys, combined with my patrons who support me on Patreon, have done something incredible. You've actually managed, I've actually managed to keep my head above water this month, which was vital because the loan runs out this month. <laughs> so thank you so much, everyone. This little adventure is going to live for another month, which is fantastic. Uh, you can buy me a coffee and now you can buy Rick, who's done the music, a coffee too. Nice. Two coffees, please. But I think the best Christmas present for Rick would actually be buying his album. Link below. Here are some of our other vids, including one where we find the answer to life, the universe and everything. So from Lockdown London, I wish you a very good new year and remember it will end and we will meet again on the other side. Uh, so thank you so much and see you on the next one. All right, bye.